Hello everyone, so I am Bernard Grossman. I'm going to, uh, to moderate uh, this uh, roundtable discussion on uh, disrupting the banking uh, industry. Uh, so this topic is quite broad, so I'm afraid that uh, 13 minutes won't be enough, but we'll try to, to make it. Uh, and to make this happen, I'm uh, very pleased to welcome our two speakers, uh, so Anwar Naveos and uh, Tavet Inelikum. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. You like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Like so maybe a brief introduction. So Anwar uh, is in charge of uh, acquisition and partnership at, uh, within uh, Credit Mutuel Arkea, a French, uh, a French bank. Tavet is a, a co-founder and a, a CEO of uh, Transferwise, which is a a company involved in the uh, foreign exchange uh, uh, business for B2B, uh, for B2C application. Uh, so maybe I will start first of all, uh, if you, both of you can introduce yourself uh, as well as uh, your organization and uh, company. So I know if you can Okay, thank start. you. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Anne-Law. I've been week working within uh, the group Credit Mutual Arkea for about 10 years. Um, I've started in the in-house startup that, uh, that was an online broker, uh, an early form of uh, the actual Fortuneo Bank that some of you certainly know. And uh, I stayed there during four years helping grow that, that uh, great company. And then since 2008, I, uh, I was asked to create a team to support the development of the groups to external growth means and so we, we contribute to open the models through uh, minority stakeholders and acquisition of entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial structures, sorry. David, yourself? Hey everyone, it's a pleasure to be here in France. So I'm a founder of TransferWise and we have a very simple mission at TransferWise. We want to make it very easy for anyone to move money around the world. I started the business because of a personal frustration with the banking system and uh, specifically <laughs> with the fact that banks are not telling you what they're doing and not doing what they're telling. Uh, so I realized myself that uh, banks uh, take between 5 and 10% of the money when I send money internationally using a bank. And uh, me and my co-founder, Krista, we found a better way of doing it. Uh, and we thought we can help a lot of other people if we build it out as, as a service for them. Okay. So Anna, I will start the uh, first question with you. So you have been working in a bank, uh, uh, which, for the, well, which, which started uh, like a few, a few years ago to, to start closely with a, a disrupting startup company instead of uh, competing face-to-face -face with them. As an, as an example, we can mention a company like uh, Credunio, it's a company in the crowdlending business uh, that you have been backing for the past six or seven years. So, can you describe a little bit the way you are working with this company? And uh, I will add, like, successfully with this company, because I understand that you are quite active and you are a uh, partnership with a lot of, of these companies. So if you can say some, uh, some word on that. Uh. Well, like, uh, like many people here, we observe that the world is changing and that it's changing fast. So uh, we just came up to, um, to the conclusion that uh, we, we had to move along this world and to to be early adopters of, uh, of disruption and to try to, uh, to be part of uh, this, uh, this big move rather than to uh, oppose something that is going to, to happen. So we, we've been uh, doing that for several years now. Uh, our first investment in uh, what we call now FinTech uh, was in 2010. And so we started with, uh, with Prédignon, which is a, a leading French player for peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending. We're very proud to, to have been there from the beginning. We, we have also invested in, um, in uh, Linkso, which is a personal finance uh, management tool. And, uh, and we are also to the side of um, companies in payments like uh, natural security that experiments uh, biometric payments and or more recently we've just announced uh, before the summer that we we were investing in your money 
So uh, a new uh, company with a new approach to, uh, to uh, wealth management and uh, asset allocation. Good. So Tavet, given your, your background uh, uh, as a former uh, Skype person, so you, have, uh, you already have disrupted uh, uh, an industry, what, back 10, 15 years ago? Of course, it was in the telecom industry with, uh, with Skype. Uh, so you're back in the disrupting business, so you decided to disrupt the Forex market. Uh, so two questions. When you start, was started your business four years ago, uh, did you consider to, uh, uh, to launch a startup like, a, like in another vertical, or for you, the Forex market was clear? It was a good place to, to, to develop a company. And also, if you can tell us a, a little bit about the difficulties that you have, uh, because I understand that the, in your current business, uh, 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 the, legal and, uh, the legal aspect is quite important. The regulation and legal aspect is very important. So if you can tell us about the, the hurdles that you had to, to go through to be successful. Um, sure, happy to. So why, why did, did we launch a business in, uh, in money transfer? It's really simple. It goes back to the experience I had and my co-founder Christo had as we were using banks and uh, as we realized that a very simple service uh, has been made incredibly difficult by banks. You know, we're living in the 21st century and uh, sending money around the world should not be any harder than sending an email. So kind of coming with my, with my Skype experience and uh, you know, that's kind of had an incredible personal impact on me in the sense of seeing how we can change the world and make the world uh, a much smaller place by letting people communicate. Uh, then, and then we, if we couple that with the personal frustration of uh, uh, what banks are doing to my, to my own money, then it was pretty, pretty easy to get to the conclusion that we can do something to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. We can do something to help all these people who need to transfer money. So there are 230 million people who either work, live or study abroad, and all these people at some point have a need to move their money. And by giving them a very easy to use and very cheap and uh, transparent way to do it uh, makes our world much better. So you know, having an impact on the world uh, made it made really sense uh, to, to dive into it. So the you know, other question was, a, was about the difficulties in regulation. So go, you know, kind of again reflecting back from my Skype experience, when we launched Skype, uh, we spent a lot of effort not to be regulated as a telco. <laughs> you know, we had a, a team of lawyers working on this. And, I'm pretty surprised that I think it's still the case that Skype is not regulated as a telco, even though Skype now does 40% of international long distance calling. So when uh, starting TransferWise, we realized that it will make sense to take a bit of a different approach, and it actually it will make sense to embrace regulation. Regulation is a scary thing if you are a tech entrepreneur, or like, you know, if you, if you look at typical tech founders, regulation isn't our strong side. You know, but we kind of figured that uh, to be successful in this space, we do need to cooperate with regulation. So we got regulated before we launched, and now we have a significant team of people working on regulation. I mean, you know, the company is 400 employees now, 400 employees strong now, anyways. But you know, the team on regulation is also significant. So it just made sense to embrace this and and make sure we do everything to make our lives easy in the long term. We are subject to the same rules and regulations as commercial banks are when it comes to anti-money laundering, know your customer. So all of these things which make transferwise's life harder, which make our customers' lives, lives harder, but we have to do this to be a good corporate citizen. So I think that's maybe the, the biggest non-traditional thing when it comes to fintech. You have to embrace regulation. You need, need to get your head around it. But I think it's not that hard. If you are a technically minded person, you can actually read the regulation, you can process it in your head, you will, you will be able to figure out why the regulation exists, and then you'll be able to build competencies around it to, to be successful. OK, thank you. So and now, within your, your company, so Credit Mutual Arcade, what, what is your other topics or the verticals that you are considering to, to invest I mean, on the digital space? So I understand that things like crowdfunding, it's not in your DNA or it's not in your radar screen. Uh, can you tell us about uh, which of the vertical you plan to, to be more active, uh, digitally so, speaking? So ag actually, investing is uh, one way uh, of uh, intervening in, uh, in this big uh, disruptive movement. But uh, the, we are also working internally on, uh, on many ways to uh, reinvent our own uh, business. And in, in particular, we, we've been working uh, for several years on uh, retail banking, retail banking to, uh, yeah. Yeah, to really identify 
our key expertise, our value, because what is the big thing in, uh, in this profound uh, mutation of uh, financial industry is really to, to focus on, uh, on the intermediation. All intermediation businesses have been uh, profoundly uh, disrupted by uh, newcomers, uh, fintechs, but also uh, in other industries. And we all face the, a common challenge, which is what is intermediation with value. So we've been working on, uh, on this for several years, and investment is a, is a part of uh, this strategy, but uh, of course we, we are also uh, promoting in, in innovation internally and, uh, and creating an initiative to, um, to contribute to, to this uh, big change. Okay, so now I have a question for, for both of you. Like in the banking industry, which other vertical can be, uh, can be addressed by new entrants? I mean by a startup company. There are very few uh, verticals uh, today that are not uh, attacked by uh, fintechs, one or, or the other. To today, we, we just observe that there are fintechs everywhere attacking every single segment of the bank. I think there's only one vertical left where banks have an advantage. So banks are pretty good at keeping your money. Yes. <laughs> and that's the only thing they are good at, I'm afraid. If you look at money transfer, we're owning money transfer. We look at lending, funding circle, lending class, they're owning lending. We look at the wealth management, the wealth front, nutmeg, are owning that. So the only thing left is holding your money. So that's what I'm having a hard time seeing someone disrupt in a great way. You know, we have lots of startup mobile banks that are launching a dozen a month. Uh, I don't think most of them will succeed, but you know, we will see. But uh, keeping your money is the only thing which they're still good at. Okay. And maybe as a conclusion, uh, what can be done to improve, to improve the relationship between startup and big corporation, or at least startup in the fintech industry and banking? Uh, what can be done to, to improve the relationship so, th so to make sure they're working closely together and uh, on the regulatory or whatever? So what's your, if you, if you have so, a doing, what, what can be done to? Uh, our, our experience in that area is uh, very good, and I think uh, fintechs would say it uh, better than I do, but uh, we but have really close relationship with uh, a lot of fintechs today that bring us a different... Maybe, uh, a different but maybe, maybe Credit Mutual Archive is an exception in the, in the <laughs> yeah. background, right? In the, in the ecosystem now, don't you think? Of course, but there are a lot of value to, uh, to partner with, uh, with all these uh, innovative players and, uh, and a lot of ways to reinvent uh, your own model, so maybe don't be afraid. Okay, Stavet? I think banks should go ahead and get rid of all the baggage they have, so go ahead and sell off your branch network mm -hmm. and then invest that money in building relationships with startups who are providing your services in a much better way. I think, you know, there is in all of the verticals that I mentioned and all the other ones, the, the reality is that tech companies are providing the services much better than banks. The way we move money around is inherently faster and cheaper than the way a bank does it because we don't rely on the outdated SWIFT network. The way lending cloud and peer-to-peer -peer lenders are lending money is much better because of the way the model is built. So banks should just embrace it. They should ditch the baggage they have in, in the branch network and then work with the best of the best. Very okay. simple. Thank you, thank you, Anne Thank you, Tavet. I would like to thank our, our two speakers. So I'm not sure that we, we solve all the issues about uh, disrupting the banking industry, but at least we, we tried. We have been trying for 30 minutes. So thank you very much. Thank you, Benoit.